As I think about my life right now, I realize that life is pretty good for me. I live in a comfortable home. I have enough money to pay for my bills and I've saved for retirement. I eat healthy food. Well, I usually eat healthy food, you know. Uh, but I exercise every day and I have time for my spiritual practice. There are people in my life who love and support me. Things are pretty good. Things are pretty comfortable for me. But you know, it's, it's not always been that way. There have been times in my life that I have found difficult, that I've not been sure how I would make it through. Now, I don't want to say that the difficult things I faced in life are worse than anything anybody else has gone through. That wouldn't be true. And, you know, I, I don't want to like overly dwell on this, but I want to talk about difficult things in life and how they inform the way we live. And as I talk about this today, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. When I talk about difficult things in my life, it's important for you to know what I'm talking about. Whenever I was young, I was bullied a lot and, and it got so bad whenever I was in college that I transferred to a different university. And then a few years later, I was living in an apartment and the apartment building I was in caught fire. I was the one who discovered it and called the, the fire department in the middle of the night. It was in a different apartment. But I lost most of my stuff and there in the middle of the night, I am homeless. Didn't know quite what I was going to do. Uh, and then a few years after that, the AIDS crisis kicked in. And I was really involved in developing aid services and education and things. And that was challenging work. But what was more challenging was watching so many people that I know die. In one year, I lost about 28 people that I knew. And that was just one year. And it was no wonder in the midst of that that I ended up being treated for depression. And, you know, this was whenever I was in my mid-20s. What 25-year-old goes through something like that? Things leveled off a bit, and I was later working in uh, an agency where I was clinical director for a counseling program, and I thought things were going well. Uh, and I walk in mon one Monday morning to my office, and, and there the executive director is waiting for me to tell me that the agency is closing, that today would be the last day, that because of financial mismanagement, there was no more money. And it, not only was I out of a job, but I needed to inform my 16 staff members that they were without jobs. Well, that really threw me into a tailspin, and I was on unemployment for eight, nine months, something like that, before I figured out what I was doing. Uh, that was really hard for me to feel the rug pulled out from under me. And in between some of this, because of my work in social activism and for different justice causes, I received death threats. I would get calls in the middle of the night, uh, people threatening my life. Uh, I had my home vandalized, my car vandalized, all kinds of nonsense. And then there were sort of the normal things that happened, you know, with my parents aging and dying. Uh, my father ended up being bedridden for several years, unable to speak, really unable to move. That was really difficult to see that happen to him and try to be some sort of support in the situation, especially as a drug on year after year. And, and then my mother, well, her final years were a little easier, but she had a stroke that took out her eyesight. She lived with us for five years as a newly blind person before she died. And she really required not a lot of care, but a lot of companionship because she was suddenly blind. So those were some of the things that I went through. And again, it's not that I've had it harder than anybody else. We all have our own challenges. What's important isn't what I went through, but what I've learned looking back on that. You know, psychologists talk about things like post-traumatic growth. That's when you grow and, and find new parts of yourself after you've experienced trauma. And there are concepts in positive psychology like thriving and that are talk about how we continue to, to thrive and build a better life, meeting our goals. And 
I read those things. I even teach them in graduate schools. I, you know, I know this stuff. But that hasn't captured what my experience was. It's nice theory. It's very positive sounding theory. But it's not what has really hit me inside. I look back and I realized that what kept me going when I wasn't sure how I was going to get through had to do with faith. Now, when I say faith, I'm not talking about creeds or dogmas. Yes, I know creeds. I have a few memorized. And I think they're nice theological artifacts. But they don't really ring true for me in my real life. The faith that rings true for me in my real life, that touches me deeply, is a belief that no matter what happens to me or around me, that there will still be goodness, that there will still be grace, that there will be some moment of awe or opportunity or openness that will occur no matter how difficult the situation is. I look back and I realize that in all the difficulties I experienced, there were people in my life who were caring and supportive in some way. No, they didn't necessarily solve it. No, they didn't take me away from it. But they were encouraging. And that means the world to me. Some of those people were strangers. Some of them were people who I'm still close to. But in those difficult situations, I found that there was always some goodness. And I grew in the awareness that no matter how difficult things were, there was still goodness in life. There was still grace in life to counterbalance it. And so now I'm in my mid-60s and looking at all these things, and I'm starting to understand how important it is to have that basic faith, that understanding in life's goodness. I recently read humorous Garrison Keillor's book, Serenity at 70, Gaiety at 80. And while it was a fun book to read, one of the things he said towards the end of the book, this is not a quote, this is my description of what he said, was that he had reached the point in his life where he realized that nothing was going to happen in the future that was going to be worse than anything he had gone through. And given the, some of the things he went through in his life, he knew that he was going to be able to meet the challenges ahead. I look at my life as I am aging, experiencing my body in different ways, having concerns about my physical health. And I realize, just like Garrison Keillor, nothing's going to happen in my future that's going to be any worse than what I've already experienced. But even better, because of what I've experienced, I have an idea of how to navigate the challenges in the future. And I know that because I have that faith that no matter what comes my way, goodness in life will also come my way. So will grace. So will opportunities and inspiration. They'll all be there. My hope and my prayer is that you're able to find that in your life too that's so important for us to be able to find that balance and, and that way of working through to realize that even when life is difficult, there is still goodness and hope and grace in life. If you wanna talk more about what that means for your own life, feel free to reach out to me and we can talk about spiritual direction and how that could fit into your life. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, make some comments, and know that I really appreciate the time you spent listening to this video. Have a great day.